Let's dive right in. Once again, today we're going to be starting off with Avogadro. You can download Avogadro for free from avogadro.cc, and this is what we're going to use to create both our ribbon structure and the skeleton for animating it. Getting started in Avogadro, we're simply going to come to File, Import, Fetch from PDB, and I'm going to choose 1CRN as the protein I want to work with today. It's important when using this approach to bear in mind that this will not necessarily work for giant proteins or huge structures. It also largely only works for cartoon models, and ball and stick will be something that I'll hopefully touch on later on. Now, once this white box has appeared, your protein is present in the scene. To make it visible, simply click this wrench, and this will bring up a number of settings. You can see these are controlling aspects of the sheet, or the loops or the size, as well as the helices. So, set it up the way that you actually want it to look in your final scene. I'm going to go with just about here. And I'm going to go ahead and come to File, Export, VRML, and we're going to simply save this where we want it to go. Now, when we save this, I'm going to save this as the full protein. One thing worth noting is that Avogadro will not actually export the color data that we see here to Blender. I gather from the folks at 3dproteinimaging.com that their service actually does do that, and with the same file format. So if you want to preserve the colors, you should be able to use the full protein model from their service and then get the structure from Avogadro. It may also be possible to use the structure or skeleton for animating from 3D Protein Imaging, but I'm not sure. So for today, we're simply going to stick to Avogadro. Now to create the skeleton, all we have to do is come to the cartoon settings, grab this little wrench, and we're simply going to turn everything down to zero. Once everything is at zero, don't worry, it is going to look like a blank scene, but there is actually still information here. So we're simply going to exit this, and we're going to do the same thing we did before. Coming to File, Export, VRML, and this time we're simply going to save this as Skeleton instead of as Full Protein. Click Render, and from here we should be able to go to Blender. To get started in Blender, we're simply going to grab and delete the default cube, come to File, Import, .wrl, and we're going to navigate to where we placed that skeleton file. So we're going to start by grabbing the skeleton protein and importing it. Now we'll wait a few seconds and we'll see a camera has appeared way over here and this object shape index face set, which doesn't seem to relate to anything at the moment. We'll start by deleting the camera and we're going to rename this skeleton. Now if we tab into edit mode with the skeleton selected, you'll see we actually have all of these verts. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is simply hit M and merge by distance. You can see we've actually removed a very significant number of verts, and now we have a perfect chain reflecting the protein. This is actually going to serve as our rigging point. And to do that, we're very simply going to come to the modifier properties, add a skin modifier, and then you can see if we hit Z, come to wireframe, tab into edit mode, we now have all the verts in this nice mesh. But this is not actually the mesh we're going to use. We're going to simply select a vert, doesn't matter which, but ideally you want one where the bending of the protein can happen relative to this position. Don't put it at either of the ends because then everything will pivot around it. Usually put it somewhere in the middle in an area where you know you're not going to have to worry about how it bends around that. And once you have that vert selected, simply click mark root. Then we can tab back into object mode and we're going to click create armature. And this is now the anchor for our armature. The armature is a series of these bones that are linked to all the verts, and they are going to help us model or mold or animate this protein. I'm now going to hide the skeleton because we won't be using it anymore. From here, we're simply going to come to File, Import, .wrl, and this time we're going to import the full protein. Because of the way that this export works, it's actually placed it exactly over our armature in the exact right space. We are going to delete this extra camera, and we will rename this as full protein. And we're going to do a little bit of setup here just to get the protein ready to work with. So we're going to tab into edit mode, once again hit M, merge by distance. This time we're going to hit F3, and we're going to look for tries to quads. Then we're going to tab into object mode. In solid view, what we're going to do is go add a subdivision surface modifier of one, a weld modifier, and simply apply both of those. Then we'll tab back into edit mode, come to edge with everything selected, so A to select everything, then edge, unsubdivide, and this is just reducing some of the geometry, which is going to make it easier to work with when you actually want to animate this. Then we can tab back into object mode. We'll come and add a subdivision surface modifier of two, and this is actually just going to smooth out again. The reality of this modifier though is that we can hide it in the viewport. 
And then when we actually want it in our render, everything will look nice and smooth, but in the viewport, it won't slow down our animation when we're actually working. And the final wonderful little trick here is simply select your full protein, shift and select your armature, hit control P and then parent with automatic weights. Wait a few seconds, depending on the size of your protein, and now you've actually fully rigged this protein to work with this armature. The protein is now hiding underneath it. So I'm going to quickly clean up the edge of the protein right here by simply grabbing the actual protein, tabbing into edit mode, and then using two for edge select, grabbing just the open ring there, shift G, mount of faces around an edge, F to fill that in, control B to bevel and drag that out slowly, rolling up on my mouse wheel twice just to get that nice smooth end cap. And now we can actually talk about how we're going to use the armature to animate this whole thing. Once you have the armature selected, we're going to hit control tab, and this is going to open something called pose mode. And I can now grab any of what are called bones along this chain and use that to control and manipulate the actual mesh. So I'm going to use C for circle select, and I'm going to drag out over all the bones that I want to move, these ones specifically. Now I can simply hit R and it will actually move the whole mesh and you can see it's updating. It's going to move relative to the pivot point here, but that's only because I have median point selected. So if I hit period key, I can see it's moving relative to the median point. What I can also do is control individual origins. Now, one thing that I'm going to say before I get into any of that is that usually what you should do at any point in time is to grab every point in your armature and add location, rotation, and scale keyframes to everything. Once you've added your location, rotation, scale keyframe, simply Alt A to deselect everything, jump ahead the number of frames that you want to move, let's say 24 in this case, and now, once again, I'm going to use circle select with C and just drag out over all of these points. As I showed before, I could move these by simply rotating like this, or what I can also do is hit the period key and change from medium point to individual origins. Once I have everything set to individual origins, you can see if I hit R and rotate again, this will now coil. And I can actually use this to control pretty much anything about this rig that I want. I can animate this protein to do pretty much anything. So I'll lock it right here. I'll hit I and add location, rotation, and scale keyframes. I will remember that I actually want to add them to every point. So I'll hit A to select everything, then I, location, rotation, scale. Even though the rest of this isn't moving, it is important because if I didn't have those keyframes and then say I moved ahead a number of frames and just move this over here, it would register that it was moved the whole time unless I had something locking it in place. If that doesn't make sense, just trust me, this is largely the way that you want to do this. And so we'll go ahead, jump to frame 48. Now I will Alt A to deselect everything, C select over here this time, and now I'm going to move all of these. So I'm going to hit R again, and you can see I can coil that up. A to select everything, I, location, rotation, and scale. And if I come back all the way to zero on my timeline, control tab to come into object mode, I can hide the armature, look just at the protein, and very, very important here, move the armature above this subdivision because you want the subdivision to apply afterwards. Otherwise, sometimes you get strange shading. So go ahead, press play, and you can see it's gonna coil here, it's gonna uncoil there, and you could freely pose this however you wanted. If you needed to wrap around something, you can set that up. It's a little painstaking, but actually having the armature ready and fully rigged makes this very, very easy and accessible to anyone. So I'm simply going to go ahead at this point and grab a material, throw it on my protein, Let's say a bright green today, very shiny. We hit Z material preview. You can see this is our final result. If we go ahead and enable our subdivision surface in the viewport, then we will have a nice smooth final protein, fully rigged, easy and accessible. So as always, thanks for coming out. This is something that I really hope to revisit in the future. This approach does not yet work for larger proteins. I'm not sure if it's a hardware issue or not, but it's also something that I haven't quite adapted to ball and stick models, which are a little bit more useful or generalizable to things like molecules and crystals, and perhaps some of the other ways of presenting proteins. So I do hope to follow this up in the future, but until then, hopefully this has been useful to you. If it has, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, and until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.